Hey guys, so I'm going to be filming some stuff for Core Pure Year 2 because some of my students wanted some extra help on this and so I thought it would be useful to record these for everybody to look at. So complex numbers in, years, in Year 2 builds on loads of the things from Year 1 but it becomes significantly harder. So first of all we start off by looking at a new form which is the exponential form. We remind ourselves of some of the properties of multiplying and dividing and this is where things start getting a lot trickier when we look at a theorem called de Moivre's theorem. We start using de Moivre's theorem and then we do some much more complicated things to do with sums of series and with roots as well. So we're just going to get started on this straight away. As a bit of a recap for this first video, I wanted to remind us of lots of the things to do with Corpure from year one. So recap of the modulus argument form that we can plot imaginary numbers and complex numbers, sorry, on an argand diagram like this. And I'm going to plot um, this particular number. So I'm saying if Z is equal to X plus I, Y, and I'm supposing in this case that Z was in the first quadrant, what was R? Well, R was the, uh, the length of this line, which we called the modulus of Z. And this was found by doing the X coordinate squared plus the Y coordinate squared and square rooting it because of Pythagoras. And to find out what theta was, which was the argument of Z, it was found by doing the inverse tan of Y over X. And that's because from the opposite side of this angle is Y and the adjacent side is X. And if you could do the correct uh, signs of Y and X, in other words, negatives and positives, it should give you the right kind of... Um, it should give you the correct angle, but it's always worth drawing a diagram just to make sure that you've got the angle correct as well. Another thing I've got here is that when theta is between minus pi and pi, that is known as the principal argument. In other words, we need the argument to be in uh, pi being measured in this direction or minus pi. It's a bit different to how we've done things before with trigonometry, where we normally say between zero and two pi. The principal argument this time being the one that you should always give is between either pi or minus pi. So in terms of r and theta, we can also use our knowledge of triangles to say that the x coordinate, because it's adjacent to the angle, is r cos theta. The y coordinate is r sine theta. So z, z being equal to x plus i y is just r cos theta plus i r sine theta, which when you factorize it, is just r cos theta plus i sine theta. And this is known as the modulus argument form because r is the modulus and theta is the argument. So this is kind of the one of the forms we have, and then this is the second form that we will have looked at before. So just as a bit of a recap of some of these things we've got here, we're going to have to think about putting these ones into modulus argument form. Now I always like to do a sketch of these on the argand diagram. So for my first one here, which I shall do in blue, I want to just say where this lies on the diagram. Well, minus one is over here. And so clearly the length of this line is just going to be one. And the angle that this line is traveling in this direction is going to be pi. It could be minus pi, but we take um, pi to be the principal argument in this case. So the modulus argument form is going to be one brackets cos pi plus i sine pi. We probably wouldn't have that one at the beginning, so it's just going to be cos pi plus i sine pi. Okay, we'll do number two here, which is just going to be i. So here's my argon diagram, and i is going to be up here. So pretty easy to see the length of that line is just going to be one and this time the angle is 90 degrees which is pi over two. So I'm going to say that in its modulus argument form this one is just going to be cos of pi over two plus i sine pi over two. And then for the next one that we've got we've got one plus i. So let's select a different color here. I'm going to do a quick sketch just to make sure I get everything right. So it's going to be one to the right and i up here. So here is the complex number. Now r, which is going to be uh, the length of this line, is just going to be 1 squared plus 1 squared square rooted, which is square root 2. And just through your knowledge of trigonometry, you can see that this angle is going to be 45 degrees, or pi over 4. So in modulus argument form, it's root 2 cos of pi over 4 plus i sine of pi over 4. And then for our last one that we've got here, which I'm going to do in purple, we've got minus root 3 plus i. Let's do a slightly bigger diagram for this one. So it's over here as minus root 3, and it's up here with plus i. We're going to try and find out what the angles are going to be here. 
and what the length of the line is. So the length of the line is going to be doing Pythagoras to this. So it's going to be the square root of the square root of 3 squared plus the um, upward length here, which is 1 plus 1 squared. Well, that's the square root of 3 plus 1, which is the square root of 4, which is just going to be 2. Pretty obvious that the length of that line here is 2. Now we need to find out what the angle is. So we can actually do the inverse tan of the y over x in this case, which is just going to be the inverse tan of uh, 1 over minus root 3. Let's see what that gives us. So it's going to be the inverse tan of 1 over minus root 3. And for some reason, my calculator, here we go, is minus pi over 6. Now, this is where things are going to be a bit misleading, because this angle isn't minus pi over 6. So I think what is better to do here is actually just to think about what this angle here is. We're going to actually find out what that angle is, which means we won't need to have the negated bit. OK, we're just going to do what that angle is for a triangle like this, where there is 1 over here and root 3 over here. So it's going to be the inverse tan of 1 over root 3, which you should know is pi over 6. So if this angle is pi over 6, the argument measuring it from here to here is 5 pi over 6, which means that in its modulus argument form, it is going to be 2 cos of 5 pi over 6 plus i sine of 5 pi over 6. And you could check this answer, because I could actually do the cos of 5 pi over 6, and I could multiply that by 2, and I do get the negative root 3 that I have here. And I could also do the sine of 5 pi over 6 and multiply it by 2, and I do get the 1i that I have here. So it does actually work, and you can check these things out as well. Okay, so that's just a bit of a recap for this first video, and we're going to start looking at the new exponential form in the next video.